Everyone wants to be one in a million, but I beat that statistic. I am more unique than one in 10 million. I have a bleeding disorder called afibrinogenemia, which basically means that I don't have the protein fibrinogen in my body. My doctors say that I was born without it, and that I never had fibrinogen and never will. But I'm not buying it. It's about time that I launch a formal investigation. My name is Detective Dahlia, and I'm going to find out where or where did my fibrinogen go? I've done a little research on fibrinogen to find out where it might be. Fibrinogen, otherwise known as factor 1, plays a major role in the blood clotting cascade. It exists as plasma and is necessary for the platelet aggregation and the formation of fibrin gel that define the blood clotting process. In its natural state, fibrinogen exists as a soluble monomer. But in the blood clotting cascade, a protein called thrombin comes in and cleaves the fibrinopeptides to remove them from the fibrinogen protein. This allows fibrinogen to make a really cool transformation into fibrin, forming a gel-like and soluble polymer that serves as the foundation for blood clots as a response to injury. These fibrin polymers link together and cross-link to form a sticky, mesh-like overlay that catches the platelets and red blood cells as they pass by the site of injury and forces the formation of a strong blood clot. Now, I might know all of this about fibrinogen, but that doesn't help me find it. To find out what really happened to my fibrinogen, I need to gather more information. Let's go interview some things that I know fibrinogen commonly interacts with. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for fibrinogen. Do you think you can help me by any chance? What is it exactly that you're doing? Are you alright? No, I'm not. The name's Paul Platelet, and I have no idea where Franny Fibrinogen is, and without her, I just keep going back and forth through this blood vessel, and everything is so cold and lonely. I just don't know what to do without Franny, and I'm scared. She's usually my biggest support. She really holds me together, helps me fill the holes of Barry blood vessel when he gets hurt. Without her, I've just been aimlessly passing through this hole, and there's really nothing I can do to fix it on my own. Hmm. Her name is Franny. Interesting. Don't you worry. I'm gonna track Franny down. Can you describe what Fibrinogen looked like the last time you saw her? She has such a complex style, how could I ever forget? Franny has a central nodule linked to a nodule on each end with alpha helix coiled coils. She is symmetrical on either side of the central nodule, and both sides of the central nodule have essentially the same structure. Franny Fibrinogen has three pairs of polypeptide chains, with two each, A-alpha, B-beta, and gamma chains. The three types of chains are mostly homologous in amino acid sequence, except for a few functional differences, and the N-termini of all six chains are held together by 29 disulfide bonds in a central nodule that hold the two halves of the protein together. Or something like that. If my memory serves correct, her N nodules are made up of the C-termini of beta and gamma chains. She also has two pairs of disulfide rings at the end of her coiled coil regions that link all three types of chains together. She also has asparagine-linked carbohydrates on her beta and gamma chains that are added after translation. When I see her around, she's usually missing her A and B small fibrinopeptide subunits because theothrombin likes to cleave those off so that she's better at helping us form clots. Without the A and B subchains, she looks so different. She just has an alpha, beta, and gamma polypeptide chain and changes her name to fibrin. That's really how she's able to participate in the clotting process. As fibrin, she forms sticky, gel-like strands that interweave and hold us platelets together and provide support to force us to fill the damaged blood vessels and form a blood clot. Thank you so much. This has been very enlightening. Yeah, ever since this hole formed, Barry Blood Vessel hasn't stopped complaining. I used to see him with Franny Fibrinogen all the time. Maybe he knows what's up. I gotta go back to work now. Please find her. We can't clot without Franny Fibrinogen here. Excuse me, my name is Detective Dahlia. I just talked with Paul Platelet, and he said you might know where Franny Fibrinogen is. Barry Blood Vessel, Fibrinogen has helped fix you up before. How did that go? Well, let me show you. When she patches up my holes, Calcium binds to Franny Fibrinogen, which helps stabilize her and improve her function. One calcium binds to her gamma subunit and two to her beta subunit. That's why we always have to maintain the concentration of calcium in the body, and it helps protect Fibrinogen from plasma digestion and denaturation by heat at high temperatures. She also has a lot of interactions with Factor 8A, which catalyzes the formation of covalent lysine bonds between fibrin molecules wrapped around the platelets and blood clot formation. This stabilizes the blood clots even more and keeps me from losing my valuable fluids. Wow, Franny Fibrinogen seems really important around here. Is there any reason that Franny might run away? Well, she has a tough job here. In her fibrin form, Franny has to be rigid enough to stop bleeding, but open enough to allow perfusion of liquid and penetration of cells. If she makes clots that are too stiff, it can lead to parts of the clot breaking off and causing a stroke or deep vein thrombosis or even a heart attack. And if she makes clots that are too weak, the bleeding won't stop. So really, 
Franny is being stretched to her limit in most bodies and stressed to her core. Thank you so much for your time. Do you know anyone else who might know her whereabouts? Maybe Larry Liver knows something about this. After all, he is the one that created Franny Fibronogen to begin with. Hi Larry Liver, I'm Detective Dahlia, and I'm investigating the case of my missing Fibronogen. My sources tell me that you synthesized Franny Fibronogen yourself. Can you tell me a bit about that? I synthesized Franny's polypeptide chains in an orderly way in my rough endoplasmic reticulum. The most difficult part of fibrinogen synthesis was ensuring that the disulfide bonds between the two halves of the molecule came together properly, and I must say I did a great job with her. I usually synthesize about 1.7 to 5 grams of fibrinogen every day, but I haven't been able to in quite a while. Fibrinogen is a half-life of 3 to 5 days in your bloodstream, and we don't know how exactly it gets broken down. Only 2 to 3 percent of fibrinogen typically gets catabolized through its use in coagulation, so it's always been a bit of a mystery what happens to the rest. So you don't quite know what's happening to her, do you? Yeah, I might have made her, but she does not write home. I'm so proud of everything she does here, but it is honestly quite disappointing how she just disappeared. All I can tell you for sure is Franny Fibrinogen's face has been on those milk cartons for over 19 years. Probably since about when you were four. Did you take her? Give her back to me! I blame your genetics! I miss my little girl! Yeah, I needed to cut the camera to make a quick getaway from that one. Things are starting to get a bit too tense for me. So, after much investigation, Franny Fibrinogen remains MIA and cannot be found. This is officially a cold case. Fibrinogen isn't anywhere in this body. One thing we did prove is how crucial fibrinogen is in the blood clotting process. So what happens if we don't have any? Well, that brings us to the medical impacts of fibrinogen, or rather, the lack thereof. There are three types of fibrinogen disorders. Afibrinogenemia, which is a complete lack of fibrinogen, hypofibrinogenemia, which is a lowered amount of fibrinogen, and dysfibrinogenemia, which is fibrinogen that is present but cannot function correctly. While the former two disorders cause excessive bleeding symptoms to different extents, this fibrinogenemia actually causes excessive formation of blood clots, leading to increased risk of deep vein thrombosis, heart attack, or stroke. Without fibrinogen, like in my body, well, the body is under constant stress, as we have clearly just seen. Maybe one day, science will be able to bring Franny Fibrinogen back to me, Larry Liver, and all the other characters that make up my body.